Good evening, all of us, Lord Jesus. Let's open the word of the Lord and gospel according to Luke. Lucas 22, a Luke 22, from verse 39. Luke. Luke 22, from verse 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accused, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was... And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Amen. <coughs> Lord, we ask that you may bless us tonight. Through your word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brother, we we are living a moment that precedes the return of the Lord Jesus. The world already lives a moment of anguish, a moment of affliction, affliction because because this picture that is being presented is already described on the prophecies. Jesus, at uh, one, uh, one point in time, the disciples asked Jesus, uh, how would be the which ones would be the signs that would precede his return? In Jesus, he used the example of a, a woman that was pregnant, a woman that is about to deliver deliver a baby, deliver a child. So where the, the pains, birthing pains, they increase because uh, the process is taking place, the process of, of the delivery, of the birth of a child. Right? So the signs, they are visible for, for the doctors as well as for the mother. They are pronounced the, pronounced the birth of a child. And Jesus said, in the same way, it will be the day of my return. Right? And so, let us look to the world that is um, disturbed. A world in which the nations they don't understand each other anymore. And all of this, all of this, the church follows up with a prophetic um, point of view to those things. Because the church, that's how the church walks. The church walks looking not to the signs, the palpable signs, but the church walks looking towards a world, a spiritual world, right? Why are we describing those things? Because the text that 
and we just finished reading. It speaks of a moment also of the the, the moment that precedes the death of Jesus, where he was going to be delivered to the hands of the evildoers. And there he was going to give himself on our behalf for our sins. And at that moment, that moment of anguish, the moment of affliction, Jesus calls his disciples in order to accompany him to the Mount of the Olives, Mount of Olives, to, in order to pray. My brethren, we know that we will not face the trials. We are not going to be able to overcome our trials without prayer. Uh, a few of us were in the prophetic service and uh, the Lord gave us a couple of spiritual gifts and that group that was there and, uh, and one of the, the gifts was speaking about this that the Lord is awakening His church for a moment of prayer a moment where we are going to travel to the mount. The Lord Jesus called his disciples as like he used to do. Jesus had the, the he, us, he used to call his disciples to go to the mount in order to pray. And that has a meaning that is very very important for the church. The Mount of Olives, the olive, which is the fruit of the olive tree, in order for the olive to become an oil, the olive oil, it is necessary for the fruit to go through a process in which it will be crushed so that the olive oil would be extracted. And the olive oil, it speaks about the Holy Spirit. The olive oil, at that time, it had a role that was very important for the society back then. It was used on medicine at that time. It was used as a fuel to light up the lamps. It was also used uh, to as a supplement on, on their diet. So man had the olive oil here there had a, an important role for the families of Israel. And my brethren, here it shows that when we are in the process of trials and the battles, we are being crushed but we are there on the Mount of Prayer, praying to the Lord. There, the Holy Spirit is extracted. Amen. The Holy Spirit begins to, to produce the, the object, uh, its objective in our hearts. So, prayer it brings to us brings to us a product and this product produces more intimacy with the holy spirit and jesus thought as this he could have gone to 
any other mount to pray. But he went to the Mount of Olives and he called his disciples. Like in that last moment, the Lord also calls his church in order to live a life of prayer. Amen. The prayer is is very effective. We we see the experiences. There were landmarks in the life of the servant of the Lord in in the Bible. There experiences that they had through prayer. The primitive church was able to survive the attacks and the fury of the enemy because the church prayed. The church persevered. The word said that the church persevered in prayer. And Peter, when he was in prison, the church was praying, incessantly prayed for him. And in the midst of the in the middle of the service, they were praying for him. And then all of a sudden, Peter uh, um, introduced himself to the service. And and someone says, hey, Peter is out there, outside. He's no longer inside of the prison. And how many of us, many times we are imprisoned, but the church is praying and the Lord sends the deliverance. We've received that. I believe that the whole church received a picture of the car of the sister. That was a great deliverance from the Lord because the church was praying. Because the church is vigilant in this last hour. We need to pray so that we may not fall into temptation because, because the moment this is a moment in which we are being attacked. The sister there in Brazil also what a great deliverance. It is a miracle. This is the fruit, the fruit of prayer. So the church prays to the Lord because we know that our prayer has touched God's heart. How many experiences, if we are here, give the opportunity to each one of you to speak here, each person would tell a different experience a prayer in moments, difficult moments, that through human eyes we have no way to have a breakthrough. We have no way to see um, a light at the end of the tunnel. But the church prays And a few days or maybe a few months pass and the person returns and says, Look, my brethren, you don't need to pray anymore because the Lord has already provided His providence because the love of God, because our God is the God of providence because it is from, from heavens that come that comes our victory. Amen. And Jesus knew this. Jesus himself being the Son of God, he taught us how to pray. To pray. 
but we need to pray at every instant. Oh, but I don't have time. My life is such a rushed life. Look, pray to the Lord. Paul said, pray incessantly in spirit. If you have the opportunity to go into your prayer room, in your bedroom to pray, may it be. But if your life it doesn't allow you, then pray to the Lord while you're driving. Be in prayer spiritually. Pray incessantly. At once, a youth, he, our youth was sharing with me an experience that he had. At his work there, he was being persecuted. Not because he was a bad employee, much on the contrary. It was because he was a good employee. Because he was was being promoted. So that there were attacks and jealousy and envy. And he was sharing with me. And he would say, my brother, I was crying at work. I would arrive at work, I'm sorry. And I'll punch the card. And I'll go to the bathroom. And there I would say a prayer to the Lord. I would lock the door. And after that, I would leave. And I would begin the work. The trials, they came. But the deliverances also, they would come from the part of the Lord. And that youth, he faced the trials in prayer. And he was honored. And the people that persecuted him, Well, I was not happy what, what happened, but all the people that persecuted me and that company, they were all fired. And my brother, because the Lord takes care of us like the apple of his eye. The servant that prays is a servant that is victorious. The song that we just sang, the victory, and the secret of the victory of the church is prayer. And the Lord was, wants to awake us to this. We remember of Job. Job also went through all the trial in his life. And at the end, the word says that Job, he was praying for his friends and God gave him twice as much as he used to have and the prayer is not only on behalf of my own life when you pray to your brother or sister you are also receiving a portion of this blessing blessed be the name of the Lord so the word says the following and when he arrived to that place, he said, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Let us pray. We need to pray all the time so that we may not fall into temptation. So that we may not go astray from the project of the Lord Jesus. Many, many are left behind because they forget. They forget about praying. They forget. 
Sometimes they think, oh, I'm not going to pray anymore. God does not hear me anymore. I'm already used to this. My brethren, do not think like that. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Ask a direction from the Lord. Do not allow your faith to be extinguished. Do not allow that the weight of your cross may cause you to be a failure. Because Jesus said that whoever wants to fall upon me, take his own cross and follow me and deny himself yourself the words the bible says that we need to deny ourselves the prayer the uh, tra uh, prayer transmits life if you're praying here you're, you're transmitting life to that person that is the target of your intercession Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he was, and when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. May God bless us. May we persevere in prayer. Persevere praying to the Lord. Never forgetting that the ear of the Lord the ears of the Lord are that are leaning towards us in order to hear our prayers. Amen. Let us praise the name of the Lord.
Oh, to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord gave a vision. I saw that there was a family that had a farm. And this farm began to uh, caught fire. And they were trying to uh, bring the fire down using a uh, rose, but it was insufficient. The water that came out of this rose was not sufficient to extinguish that fire. And that fire would begin to spread there. And that's when they began to be become worried. So then would arrive there an angel and would say the following, kneel down and pray. And when they did that, a strong rain would fall from, from heaven. And so it would extinguish the fire on the farm. My brethren, our God is a faithful God. Right. Even if you are in trials, in affliction, if you humiliate yourself, if you kneel down and pray, the Lord will send the provision. And the Lord, in this vision, He sent the provision. But he, the Lord answered a prayer. Because there are many that in midst of the trial and tribulations, they began to murmur. They murmur and begin to question a brethren. Our victory is not in this. Our victory is on prayer. Amen. Our victory is not in you murmuring and questioning the Lord. Because the one who is going to give you the providence is the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord also has shown a, a lady that had received a shoe of gold, a dancing shoe. But this dancing shoe should but she would put on top of this dancing shoe, she would put a sneaker on top of the dancing shoe. And the vision would show that she was walking on a place where there were um, pieces of glass, broken glass. And this broken glass would rip, rip this sneaker, the sneakers would rip the sneakers apart, but the, the gold dancing shoe it would remain untouched and the, the dancing shoe, the gold and dancing shoes would prevent the pieces of glass to harm that woman's feet. The gold speaks of power and there are, I uh, oh, oh, always heard when it was a new convert, the pastors there, they would say, the more the Christian pray, the more power the Christian has. And I think that they continue saying that. The more the Christian prays, more power the Christian has. So the gold here on the feet of this woman represents power on her walk because the world out there is filled with broken glasses, is filled with traps so that we might fall into temptation. But if you pray to the Lord, this will not harm you. In spite of the fact that you may be going through trials like, in, like Jesus, he was on the desert, he went through a trial. 
But Jesus was faithful to God. He trusted God. He used the Word of God. And as a result, and that's how the church will be victorious. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up, and we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord for this wonderful God. This God has delivered us, this God has guided us. Lord, we praise your name for this resource that has sustained us. Praise your name, Lord. Because this has made us more than victorious. We praise you because your church is victorious. We praise the Lord because you are everything for us. You are our sustenance, our guide. We praise your name, Lord. For yet another day in your presence. Praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want, together with your servant, we want to glorify your name and praise the Lord because to this day you have sustained us, you have blessed us, you have blessed your church. And now we plead that you may continue with us throughout the remainder of this week, giving us your blessing and the victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And to all, the peace of the Lord, the church may be seated. Uh, our service is over. If for, by any chance, if you need a prayer, we are here to give you assistance. Any announcement? No. Amen.